Today's video is going to be about Element UI, a very popular View UI component library that originated in China and is also quite popular around the world. We're going to take a look at the components and similar to the last video about View Tensils, I'm going to be breaking down more of the components and showing a demonstration rather than a full code along although I am planning on doing a code along in the future for Element UI. Hi everyone, welcome back to Faraday Academy. If you are new here, my name is Gwen and I make videos and do live streams on various programming topics and languages. If you are interested in this type of content, then please be sure to subscribe to my channel for more. I hope you enjoy this video. This demo is covering the Element UI framework for Vue.js. I built a simple application around the theme of productivity using Element UI components and classes to demonstrate the features, pros, and cons of using this design framework. The homepage is pretty simple, it's just a title. Here I'm using one of their tree view components with checkboxes. I also have a calendar, a monthly calendar, a scrollable and hoverable table, input elements and cards, as well as a basic draw menu. Before I get into talking about this application, I'm going to dive into the Element UI docs real quick. Now the documentation is pretty good, but most of it is short, sweet, and to the point, as you can see from these single line explanations. Note that these docs were originally written in Chinese, so they might be much better in Chinese than they are in English. I'm going to go to installation. Right away it shows you how to install it via NPM and the CDN and how to set it up. But it kind of hides the view CLI module, which it shows in Quick Start right here, an element plugin for view CLI 3. So I'm not sure why they don't put that in installation as that's a method of installation. But either way, it's easy enough. For internationalization, they have some really good features that you can take a look at, but I'm not going to demonstrate. I think this is probably better than any other View UI component library that I've seen. It might be because it originated in China, but also has a large English user base. And the last thing is the custom theming. Now, Element takes a different approach from any other UI framework as you are able to use a browser plugin to set your theme and basically export it and then import it into your app to update the default theme of Element UI. Now let's get into the app. So on this first page, the home page, I have this header item, which let me go into inspect, and you can see it's a header, which is actually from an Element UI container in source, views, and home page, you can see I'm using L header, which is creating the container there. Now this is a different approach from most other UI frameworks because it actually has five different types of containers instead of just using the traditional bootstrap L container item. These are all semantic. As you can see, L header creates a header tag on your page. They aren't just all divs. So there's an aside, main, and footer. It does show you some basic layouts, but I think these containers are pretty self-explanatory. Like many UI component libraries, Element has a full-featured grid system with rows and columns that you can find under the Layout tab. The big difference you'll notice here is that unlike most other grid systems you'll encounter, Element is based off of a 24-column system instead of a 12 or sometimes 16-column. Most of the time, you might not need this much fine grain control, but it is nice to have the option to use more columns, especially as we design for so many different screen sizes now from very large Ultra HD down to tablet and phone sizes. You can see that it has all of the standard features of a regular grid, including rows, columns, spacing, offsets, and all of the regular responsive classes for displaying, showing, and hiding on various screen sizes. From the app component in my repo, 
You can see I have all of my page views nested inside this L main container. And then inside the pages, let me just take a table for example, I have rows and columns, and in some cases nested rows and columns, which are pretty standard, L row and L column. The terminology is a little bit different here. Instead of saying something like calls, you're actually passing a number to this span prop, and then doing the same thing with offset if you want. And of course you can set these things to work on different breakpoints, like small, medium, large, extra large, etc. Right now I'm just using these defaults for all breakpoints. Now most frameworks will also give you the option of mixing rows and columns with Flexbox classes or using Flexbox in here, but Element UI doesn't have any Flexbox classes. So if you want something besides their default containers, rows, and columns, you'll have to code that in yourself. Another thing about Element UI in particular is that it doesn't really have design classes. In almost every other framework, you'll see something like this. I could put class and then an abbreviation for margin right of, let's say, 10 pixels. Or generally, I guess that would be 10 times 4, so that would be 40 pixels because they're in increments of however many pixels, usually 4. But Element UI doesn't have these type of classes for spacing or colors or things like that. So you kind of have to do it yourself, which is why I centered the text here instead of setting margin auto from a class. Probably not a huge deal, but it is something to note if you're used to other design frameworks. Also, this is a purposeful design decision. I looked in the Element UI issues, and this is something that they've been talking about for a while. People ask questions in the issues, or they debate whether or not Element UI should have these classes. But it seems like the core developers have made the decision that this is something we are not going to include in this framework. So let's look at another component. Now this one is the Element UI tree view and probably my favorite component available in the Element UI library. In the docs you can see the tree view here. At the most basic usage there are levels of the tree that you can open up like so. And you can also add checkboxes like I have. It shows you how to filter here. And the nicest feature, I think, is that it's draggable. And the draggable works really well. So here in the example, let's say I drag this one up here to another level. I can drag it to the root level. It's extremely smooth and well designed. It's probably the smoothest draggable library that I've ever used. Now in the code for the tasks file, you can see that I just pass in a data array of objects and then the children are also an array of objects and then children of children which are also an array of objects. And the nice thing is that if I look at the data, you go to view my tasks component, you can see that the data is an array of four objects right now. Let me just open up two of these. So this first object has no children, this one right here. So let me give it a child. And now it says it has one child in the array. So I can give it another one. So you can drag and kind of see the line or you can drag on top of an item and it will nest in that item. And it rearranges the objects for you here. It also gives you all of these events at different stages of the drags, which work really well, and you can map these to event handlers. And I'm also setting the prop here to show the checkbox, which I basically set once, and all of the elements in the whole tree view are in the checkbox. So if I check one here, it checks the above ones, because this is the only item I have nested. So if this is done, then it checks the parent, then it checks the parent. But if I have two here, so let me uncheck this, and now let me check one. Now see, it doesn't check these off. It has the minus here. So now they're all checked. Works really well. I really like this component. Nice to use. Let's talk about the calendar. So this is a monthly view of the calendar, which is actually the only view. And you can see there's not much explanation here except display date. So you can see the calendar itself looks nice. It does have some good customization that you can apply to the calendar, but it doesn't have a daily or weekly view like a lot of other libraries would. 
There's really not much to say about the calendar component, and honestly, it's a little bit disappointing. You can, of course, modify it with slots and a few things, but there's not much going on beyond just displaying a basic calendar. I don't think you would ever use this if you were going to display events on the calendar. Skipping to different dates works really well, going back and forth months. All the basics work pretty well in this. Let's look at their tables. So the table component is actually one big reason why I've used the Element UI framework in the past. It's feature rich and works really well. Let me zoom out so this displays normally. And you can see it's cut off here. It's because I have this table wrapped in a container to show that you can fix columns like this checkbox column and then have it sideways scroll. You can have columns fixed on the right or on the left or the header fixed. It's a really robust, versatile component. So you can see they have tons of table examples here of all different kinds of things you can do, infinite scroll, everything else, and it's just a really awesome, well-designed component to use. Another reason why I really like this table is because Element UI components are also designed to work well with each other. And this is the easiest library I've found where I could do more advanced things in the table cells with events and doing hover drop downs like this that I needed for one application that I was building. These components work really well together between the table and this element drop down menu, which I have in here. So inside this scope, I have the data showing in the cell, and then inside of this L dropdown, I have a span, which is the icon, and when you hover over this icon, it shows the dropdown menu. A lot of other frameworks don't seem to have nearly as many table features as Element UI for some reason, even missing simple things like having a fixed column without having to style it yourself. So if you need to make complex tables, basically this is a framework to look at. So let's look at some form elements or input fields. This is a beautify card element, which is also a bit different from pretty much every other framework. You have a header slot and then you have the main body of the card and that's it. There isn't also an action item or bar or anything at the bottom. Instead, the docs seem to suggest that you can put card interactions in the header, which is a bit different. Now the card does look really nice, but it's pretty much just this simple. You can set a couple of options. You can have it elevate on hover, just be outlined, or always be elevated. Other than that, you kind of have to style it yourself. And then you can have a header or not. Now the button is not automatically placed on this side. So they're actually, oddly enough, applying a clear fix here instead of displaying this as flex. So I'm not sure why they're doing this. You can see they have custom clear fix styles, which is something you would have to add to your app if you want to display the button in the corner, or that seems to be what they're recommending. If I go to my form component here, you can see I have this card component and then nested in the slot header, I have this title and the element button, just like the example showed except I am doing custom styling instead of using floats, like they suggest, I just changed it to use Flexbox. I had to adjust some of the padding. It doesn't seem to naturally fit, but with a few adjustments, it works just fine. And it looks pretty much like what they had in the examples. Now that's the header slot. For the rest, the default slot is just the body of the card. So I can pass in whatever else I want there, which is two input fields. Element has a whole bunch of form options that you can use. And for a lot of things, you just use the standard input. So you have your basic text input, and then you can use it for text area and things like that. Element does a really good job with its form components. You get tons of props and features. It's interesting how they design some of this. It's definitely an interesting framework. I like that it's a bit different. This is the only framework that I've ever seen with a cascader option. It's basically a select box where you can drop down different things and have nested selections, which is really interesting and super hard to do if you were gonna do that on your own. Of course, they have a great date picker and time picker, date time picker, 
I think the color picker is probably one of the best I've ever seen. Works really nicely and is easy to use with various features. Now for displaying these cards, I just have one on the page now, but I can easily change this to display 100 because this is just in a V4 loop. And now you can see it displays all 100. Of course, to get the grid like this, it was custom styling. I basically had to set flex wrap, and then on the cards I set a width, and I set some margins in between everything. Like I said before, Element UI doesn't have custom styling classes. Like if you were using something like Beautify, this would already be a class to justify content and display flex. Element UI just lets you basically use CSS classes on your own and give you some default styles and then you can update it on your own. So it's just a different approach basically. They also have an infinite scroll component. You can see it keeps loading here. You can also have a loading indicator like this one and that comes out of the box for you. I didn't set it up here but it's easy enough to set up. So finally let's look at the nav and the draw menu. This is a very basic nav bar, and unfortunately there isn't a lot of customization you can do to it out of the box. If you look in Beautify's docs, it has nav menu here, and for a top bar nav menu, this is pretty much it. The, they have nice drop downs, and you can disable and enable links, but this is all you've got to work with. And there aren't a lot of props and things to make it look different, you kind of have to do it on your own. Although this component does let you set, like here, the text color and background. One nice thing about the nav bar is that it's easy to make this vertical nav bar. And it's actually quite nice because you have this expand and collapse option. So if you're making like a portal or a dashboard, a lot of times you'll need this. And it comes nicely out of the box, displays icons very nicely. Unfortunately, this horizontal top nav bar isn't nearly as robust as the vertical one. You can see this menu button is kind of awkwardly placed there. It's not centered correctly. It would also be nice if the docs had a few more examples of different things you could do with the nav bar. And also another thing you'll notice, so I have this menu button attached to the draw, but Element is considering this as another route or option basically. So if I click on menu, it opens the draw menu, but the page disappears. And you can see here that there's an underline under menu. So Element thinks it's navigating to a page instead of just opening with a button. So it's not really intuitive there. I would have to custom place the button to get it where and how I wanted to open the draw. So I feel like something like that should be included with the framework. Now the draw itself is easy enough to use. It works well, it gives you the overlay here. And one very interesting thing I found in the docs here is that when you use the Element UI draw menu, where is it? They have an option to nest draws in draws. So if I, I open the draw and then I open another draw inside, never seen that before and not sure what kind of design I would be using that in. In some frameworks, when you open things like a draw or a dialogue, you can't have another one open because they don't work well together. But Element is designed in such a way that it seems that dialogues and draws work just fine if you have multiple open. So in my code, I put the draw in the global space here, and you can see that it's basically modeling to this draw boolean. So when this is true, it's open. When that's false, it's closed. There's also a header option that I could use. And then I pass in whatever content I want inside of it, which is just in the default slot. If you look in components here, I have the top navigation. Basically, all of the nav items are wrapped in L menu item, and they each have a route. And then I have the button also wrapped in L menu item. So I wonder if I took away this L menu item wrapper. Let's see if that still tries to route me to another page. So let me go to the menu, and it doesn't now. So that's good, but now it placed the menu button at the top. So yeah, I would still have to fiddle around with the menu button 
to get it in the right position and even the right size because it doesn't fit in with all of the other nav menu items. Now Element UI also doesn't come with typography, so it doesn't come with fonts. Now it does show some typography examples in the theme with recommendations for how things should be used as well as sizing, but these fonts mentioned here, San Francisco, Helvetica, Arial, aren't actually included in the framework. So you can basically pick whatever font you want. I'm importing just a Google font Open Sans into my project. Font sizes I have to manually set all myself. You can see they don't have any font classes here. The framework does come with some icons though, so you can look at the basic icons, which cover a lot of use cases and they have some filled in as well as outlined icons. And I kind of like their icons because they're a little different, like here, El Potato Strips, and just some things you might not see and styles you might not see if this was made by maybe someone from America. Some other common things that I didn't really touch on are buttons. It gives you all of the basic buttons that you would expect in a design framework. So you have primary, success, etc. And it gives you these color classes for buttons as well, which you can set via the type of button. Outlined buttons are a little bit different because most other frameworks won't have this subtle shade of color in the background. If it's outlined, they'll just have a transparent background, which is a little bit different. Icons and buttons work really well in Element, but they don't have many built-in styles or options. So if you want to do like a large floating action button or something like that, you'll just have to style it yourself. Overall, I would say Element UI is definitely one of the best, most robust frameworks. There are pros and cons, just like every other design framework. I believe it has the most components of any other design framework. Large companies in China and really all over the world use Element UI. So I definitely recommend that you check it out. You can see all of the code from this video in my GitHub. I'm Gwen F on GitHub, and this repo is Element UI Productivity. It's also linked in the description below. Be sure to let me know if you've used Element UI before, what your thoughts are, if you think I was missing something in this video, or if there's anything you want to say or add concerning the topic of Element UI or view design libraries. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any feedback or anything to say, like I said, you can leave a comment below or you can start a thread over on Reddit, which I just started. All of my social links are linked in the description below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.